Pat Penn? Uh, well, you're not going to talk much. Most, <laughs> most people who know me, I sometimes talk a lot, especially how God's really? working in our life. But um, <laughs> um, I've been in New Hope for like um, two, was it two and a half, three years already. And um, to, to really be fully saved and to understand the Word of God was through uh, New Hope Las Vegas, thanks to such awesome um, leaders that were led by Christ and being led under authority to teach, uh, to preach, exactly. This, sorry, I'm stuttering. <laughs> well, after being here for like, um, like I said, two or three years, God has actually opened my eyes to see how He helped us in our past. Because most of the times we, we love to, we thank God of the things He's doing with us, but like if you, if you really think about your history and when you really never had that relationship with God, God has been with us the very moment, even when we never really thought about Him. I'd like to share, um, say for example, two, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, I think. Um, I was at my, 12 years ago, I was at, um, I was at my height when my teen years, I think I was like 19, 20. Things were going great, living with my mom, party animal, all that stuff. But like, uh, uh, there was this one time when I never expected, um, I had a side pain here, like a lower right pain. I didn't know what it was. Um, started having fevers, cold sweats. So I figured this is something very important. So it was so painful that I actually had to be rushed to the emergency room. Um, the doctor told me, you know, like, Oh, the symptoms you have is, I'm sure it's just appendix, you know? So, very simple, we'll just cut you open. Um, this happens to, it's pretty common among people your age. And we'll take it out and, you know, you'll be fine, you know? So, uh, having known that this is probably like a, uh, maybe like a common thing, appendix, get removed, I'm like, all right, I'll be fine. So the doctor said, hey, you want us to numb you from the bottom down or, or, uh, go to sleep. I'm like, so you're saying I'm going to be awake while you guys operating on me? <laughs> they were like, no, you'll be fine. I'm like, just put me to sleep. So um, everything went um, everything went smooth. Uh, I remember waking up, like like these bright lights right here, right on me. I woke up. <laughs> I looked down and I saw two huge scars. I was like, what happened? What did you guys do to me? I was so afraid and scared. And they were telling me, we found out something else that happened to you. It wasn't actually an appendix. We cut this open, but we found that it was a case, so we removed it anyway. What you really had was a diverticulitis. I don't know if you guys are aware of what diverticulitis is. It usually happens for people who are 50 and older. And um, what it is is a clot in your, um, like a whole pocket in your large intestines. And if waste can't pass through it, it becomes infected. And it blows up, becomes what's called what, a, a diverticuli. And when it bursts, it becomes a diverticulitis. Unfortunately, well, fortunately, I, well, unfortunately, <laughs> it actually burst, which was actually a diverticulitis. So when I got to the hospital, he said, luckily, I went there right away because the, little, um, the poison would have leaked to my bloodstream and I would have passed away. So I was thankful, you know, for that. Yeah, yeah. And um, after having six to seven months, I'm um, living off soups and salads and I lost a lot of weight. It was very tough, but again, I started recuperating and getting all my energy back, and again, I thank God once, because I was just, you know, God just was there for me. But then when things started getting better, I started back, going back into my regular life, which was the usual thing. And in that era, that's when everybody started souping up their cars and started doing stuff like that. So um, what happened after that, things are started going great again, and then I got into a terrible terrible car accident in which uh, my dear friend passed away and I survived walking out with a fractured shoulder blade, scraps up face and a dislocated elbow was like opposite like this. <laughs> but it's really tough because like usually it's the passenger that passes away, not the driver. Unfortunately he didn't have his seatbelt on and I had a huge bruise across here. So I'm back in the hospital again with all this procedure happening with me, and it was very tough. Uh, I'll take a long story short, I started healing from that. The elbow started getting better. Thank you, Lord. You know, again, 
It was very modest. Thank you, Lord, for saving my life, you know. Then while I was still, you know, in my, um, my sling, I was going out again. I started telling God, like, oh, you know, thank you for delivering me through all this. And it was just tough, you know. And then I started drinking again. I was hanging out with my party. My friends started coming to visit me every time. Are you okay, Brian? You're fine. Like, yes. And mind you, this is a tough year already to begin with. As, as things were getting better with here and with my elbow, something happened again. I was feeling the same pain. Because I've been through it, I already know what it was. My fever started coming. My pain started coming. I was like, I took out my gold card, which is my surgeon. I said, Mom, call this now. Call this right now. Call him right now. I already know what this is. So I called. Um, my mom called and uh, I got rushed to the emergency again. And I was still in my sling. I wasn't even 100% cured yet. I said, Lord, no, not now. So then um, when I was lying in the hospital, the bed, the same doctor came and said, um, looks like I can go after the CT scans and all that. He said, looks like they have a leak in the area where I operated. There's two options. I could cut you open again and reseal it. Or we, you could stay in the hospital for two more weeks and we could treat it medically. But antibiotics, just liquids, nothing. So I'm like, okay, uh, can everybody please leave the room? You know, That's when I had that serious talk with God. Now mind you, I wasn't much of a strong believer, but I was... I was uh, I was I was open minded, so I was on the bed, Come on, bro. and I was like, Lord, on, I was like, Lord, if you're real, I mean, I just wanna, I just want to um, let you know that I don't wanna go yet. So I'm not gonna f f um, go to bed. I'm not gonna put me. I'm not gonna have them put me to sleep because I'm afraid I'm not gonna wake up. What if it's not real? What if what if it's total darkness like this and there's just not existence? So I'm scared of that. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stay awake. I'm not, I'm not gonna have to open me up. This is how I was talking to God. So I'm not gonna have to open me up, Lord. I um, I still wanna travel. I still wanna go to Vegas. I wanna I wanna go to California. I still wanna. I wanna I'm too young for this, Lord. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna stay and just keep this treated medically. And I was like, so I'm so afraid of going to sleep again because I might not wake up. So then um, I did. I called everybody back in. I said, you know what? We're gonna do the the antibiotics, I'm gonna stay awake the whole time. Like, All right, it's cool. So as we went up to the room, they, they set it, everything up, everything's good. And my heart called me to say, um, can I have a priest here, please? <laughs> like, I actually called for a priest. The priest came, he gave me a little insight on how, you know, I, I think, I think I must have believed um, I received Christ at the time, because he, I remember he did lead me to a prayer. Um, so I did, I guess. So would that consider me being saved for 10 years <laughs> or rather than two of being here? But um, since I've done that, uh, um, I just let faith uh, take its place. And then uh, now it's time to wait for results. Of course, um, God pulled through. The results came normal. Everything was 100% um, healed. Yes. So thank God for that. Thank you, Lord. Yes. 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 this day but it's just like when when 10 years later when life starts getting 100% good you begin to thank God so much for everything and um, sometimes again no matter how long when life is going good when you don't have the strength and uh, the, put the putting the word of God in your head and having applied to your life, from what I've learned is just, when life is going good, too good, it's easy to forget God again. Mm -hmm. It's easy, it's hard to just live that life again, but, and I went back, but you know, to make a long story short again, of course there was other situations that I had so much fun with and living the worldly life and money started coming in from the accidents and that I had, and I was first spending it, coming to Vegas so many times, all that stuff. But it wasn't until I came to New Hope. I started meeting real and listening to real testimonies 
being baptized by water and the Holy Spirit, to understand these things by going to foundations, to really know how to read the Bible, to invite the Holy Spirit in your presence. It's everything. Like, I love that scripture. I can do all things through Christ who give me strength. You know, that's awesome. Because greater is he who is in, in me than he who is in the world. So, it's hard. It's hard to be a Christian, but not all people can understand that. I like that scripture. It goes like... Uh, um, be, uh, be self-controlled. So set your helps fully in the grace to be given to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. But just as he who calls you holy so be holy in all you do. That's hard. But as we go throughout a day, like he says, to be holy in all you do. Worship, for example, is like a form of anything that you do, you know, that give reverence and honor to God. And I really feel like that's my quiet time with God is worship when I'm by myself is giving thanks to every single thing that I've done here today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God.